What's going on, everybody? Just got in from the Derby City Card Show. I'll give you guys some thoughts, some pickups that I did along with trades out there. Overall, um, I would say it was very well for a dealer standpoint into selling out there. A lot of people were out there buying. We didn't have a whole lot of foot traffic, but there was also another show going on. There's the big show next weekend. There was a show in Columbus. And a lot of people had different activities and vacations started. So it was a little bit odd of a show, but still very, very well into the realms of moving cards for myself out there. So I was very happy at the end of the day. Uh, wasn't much of a video. You guys probably mostly seen my display that I put up there. The Dennis Rodman jersey that was given away at the show for one person who was attending. I was going to tape that, but there was just a lot going on at that time frame, and I didn't want to be sidetracked onto the whole thing, onto it, so uh, no taping was done onto that part there. Next time, though, I promise, I'm, I'm going to find a way to where I can have the camera up in the air and do all that. It's kind of hard when you don't have a camera person, you're trying to do everything onto it. Let's see here. Um, but yeah, no, move some memorabilia out there. The autograph memorabilia, which was different for a change. Uh, value boxes, still people picking through. And for me, the value boxes now just pay for my tables or, you know, tables, breakfast and lunch, whatever it may be, plus gas, which is good, too. Uh, I only walked around at the very beginning because a lot of dealers didn't show up till like, oh, I'm guessing it was close to nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I only got to see a few people's uh, displays walking around. As you guys can see, there was uh, some pictures of a high-end uh, stuff that was out there. And that was really about it I got for video or pictures going around. I do thank a lot of you guys coming up saying you watch the YouTube channel and talking and everything. And also bringing up stuff for me to look at, do trades with and all that. Always so when you get some trades going on, get to move inventory around, stuff like that. All right, you guys ready to see what I got? I don't remember what all I traded, to be honest, because there was a lot going on. Um, so starting off, the this was probably a multiple of like three deals we did between three different things uh, going around. I think you guys might see if you guys watch 502 Frank. Uh, I know he picked some stuff up on me, a little bulk deal. Uh I'm not too sure what he has, what his thoughts were on the show. I know he was saying he didn't think he was going to buy anything else after my table. Uh, I'm not too sure. But let's take a look at some of this stuff here. So this all came from a gentleman I've been doing deals with for a while, John. Uh, I think we probably met right to probably the first show after COVID, actually. And I forget his Instagram offhand. If I remember to, I will plug it here into the video. You guys can check out all his stuff. He's got some cool stuff. He'll be set up at the Midwest Monster. Uh, some really nice Lucas stuff. He brought a lot of cool stuff today for me to look at. So they, these were all just different parts of deals and stuff like that there just to add up to make, you know, uh, everything work out. Origins, Terrence Marshall Jr. I guess he's going to be their number one receiver now. Cool uh, Sam Howell. This is numbered, I think, out of 50. Let's say six, 60, 60. A Nico Collins Prism Rookie. A lot of this is probably just going to either go DC or I am going to open up a low-end eBay store from like $5 to maybe 100 tops. So I might go in there. Then Scotty Barnes Optographs. This is probably going to be great. One thing I like is he uses the same one touch as I do where the sleeves fit in, so I don't have to change stuff out. Uh, Herbert Gold Standard Rookie. Out of 75, the only issue we saw on this was up here, a little bit of whiting up here in the very top. Looks like it might have got nicked somewhere along the way. Well, and there's a little bit of whiting down here, too. But it's, that's a common thing with gold standard. You're not going to see PSA 10s on this stuff. I mean, 9s are really, really good. 8s are probably decent. 7s are probably expected. Anybody knows gold standard, opulent, stuff like that. So pretty cool. Picked another Herbie up. Uh, let's see here. Next one was a bunch of cash and trade um, we did for the Jokic auto I had. So this is pretty cool. Their last two sales are 100, 130, 100 and 135. Thurman Thomas, flawless out of 15 auto. This dude was a monster running back. Let me see if I can get the focus now. Wow, gas. There we go. So pretty cool overall to see this out in the raw. Um, this will probably be gone with the next week offhand. 
dual relic Lamar and Hurst. I've seen weird pricing on this, anywhere from nine dollars to a hundred dollars. So I have no idea what to call it at. It was just like I said, one of those things we just threw it together, a couple of small pieces to make the deal work. Joe Adele minor league PSA ten, and our favorite Jaw Select rookie PSA nine, which probably has a pop count of like thirty thousand. So that stuff there, a lot of that, the top two definitely going DC offhand. Last one, gentlemen walked around. We did a, I put in cash plus the other Dwayne Wade auto. Pick this up, this Durant. It's still sealed. This is uh, out of Crusade, out of 25. I want to say it was 13. Yeah, 1314 Crusade. So this stuff looks pretty good from when Panini did it. I think this is another card that goes out to get graded. Hopefully it gets a 10, but we're probably going to bank on a 9 onto it. And then I just can't stop buying this guy. Isaiah Thomas out of 10. Prestige, 14 15 He had a value on only 25 bucks. I know Isaiah stuff's cheap out there. But if it looks good enough, we'll probably send in if we can get a 9 or squeak onto it or something just to get Isaiah stuff graded. But that's really everything that I got, either with some deals that came to the table, which make it a lot easier. People come to the table. A uh, lot of cards moved. I mean, Desmond Ritter flew. Gone. Like, snapped on out of there. Everybody wants Ritter, but story was Desmond Ritter's dad lives in Louisville. And the last show that I was at where I was a buyer, I guess he showed up and bought all the Desmond Ritter cards in the cases. So, could be a reason why. I have no idea. <laughs> Hopefully he's not trying to pump his own kids' cards up. Wouldn't that be kind of funny of a story to tell everybody? Let's see... Ritter was the probably the biggest one I was asked about. Not a whole lot of baseball for people wanting and looking. Um, vet autos, rookie autos like Amon St. Brown. A lot of people are on that guy. Um, basketball. Sangoon is always very popular. Any vet auto or Hall of Fame auto across the board between either sport. I'm trying to think. I didn't really have hockey out, but some people came by asking for hockey, so I did move some hockey. I didn't even put any soccer out. I, I was out of room. <laughs> out of room in my showcases. I was amazed. Like, man, I got way too much stuff here. I'm trying to think here. But a lot of the football rookies people are picking up, hoping that they make an impact this year. You know, either last year's rookie or the year before. A lot of people looking for picket. A lot of people, a lot of people just weren't looking to pay big money on Pickett either out there, which was a little bit different. Trevor Lawrence autos, big, big thing out there. Josh Allen. Um, there were no Mahomes, but people always ask me about Mahomes autos. Mm, the normal, you know, Hall of Famers to include soon one day Tom Brady because he just recently retired. I'm trying to think with rookie Fields was asked, Hurts. But yeah, but basically the normal stuff out there, uh, nothing really changed except for, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've been picking up I knew was going to go during the show. And I think that's something of, of you have to learn over time. If you know your audience, what they were been looking for, or when you're going to shows, buying and you hear what people are asking for, if you could find that stuff and bring it whenever you're a dealer, it will sell. You just have to know where you want to be at, bottom line, onto it across the board. Uh, something I learned a long, long time ago, actually. I mean, there used to be times where I'd just buy it all. Didn't care. And now it's, you know, that would have been like pre-COVID when stuff was cheap and at the very beginning of COVID. And then during COVID, stuff just got stupid crazy. Starting to see things fizzle down to where it needs to be at. Uh, we're still waiting on box prices. I mean, Upper Deck Hockey's pretty cheap on a lot of stuff right now for box prices out there uh, i didn't see a whole lot of wax but i didn't get to see everybody came in late to set up at the show if they had any wax there or not mm, that's really about it offhand gotta meet a lot of new people out there which is always good to sit there and talk and hear different stories across the board different dealers a lot of us gonna meet up at the monster uh if we don't see each other at the show hopefully at the trade night, we will. Maybe we can get our own little group thing going or something like that there as we bounce around. Trying to just to get rid of cards that we've had stagnant for maybe other people's stagnant cards, you know. What might be good in this area might 
you know, I'll, let me rephrase that. What might be good in our area that is not doing well, say in California, Texas, Florida, you know, guys coming in from other places, you know, it's just about moving stuff and getting fresh stuff that might appeal to different buyers to wherever your region is. I know I talked about this, but yes, I am going to open up a small eBay store just for the fact it's going to be seen by a lot more people than both my slabs and the website combined. Uh, eventually, I guess I could put a link in once I figure the whole thing out uh, into the videos for you guys if you guys want to buy stuff on there and stuff. But I think I'm going to just roll it mostly all now as buy it now and so not have to worry about best offers, especially if I'm pretty much competitive with the current pricing onto it. Because you know how it is. You, even if you set your best offer to where you're at on to still want to be at stuff, you're still getting pinged with, oh, I wanted a 50%, 40% stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I, I had fun with the show. It was a really good show for a, a smaller amount of dealers Do like I said, the different reasons out there and same with the crowd and stuff, but had fun. Uh, next show I'll be set up at, it will be August 19th, same place, same location, and back there again September 9th. So it will be a little bit of a quick turnaround between shows for me to make a final push for some fresh product out there. Which will be a little bit harder, having only three weeks between shows. But other than that, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm out. Catch you next one.